Hello and good game. Welcome back, you filthy dogs. Wolf, thanks for taking the time out of your day to help support the channel. Really appreciate that. Jumpstart is back. Double Wolf. We're going to break down everything you need to know to succeed within the new Jumpstart event. And we only get this bad boy once a year, so you do need to make the most out of it if you want to be the historic god that is waiting to be released from within you so um you know gonna touch on some things you want to know before you start uh farming your jumpstart cards and then we're gonna play an event so buckle up get ready thanks for watching make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already we'll be giving away a rare playset to the up and coming D, D expansion and venture into the forgotten realms i hope you're ready i know i'm super excited and really grateful that we've got Jumpstart to hold us over through the last little stretch of Strixhaven. Okay, so cool beans, let's get into it. First things first, you're going to want to track your um, progress. So there's a Google Docs here, I'll link to this Reddit page, um, and you can use this if you want. Uh, we did have another one in the last Jumpstart video we did last year, um, but that seems to be what most people are doing and you can also visit mtga zone shout outs to them great website of course uh you know love terrence he's a good guy who runs it and uh you know read through this right this has uh more information than i can coherently convey to you guys within a video and it actually breaks down you know all of the different decks and what cards are included within those decks because we want to be uh, keeping track of the decks that we pick throughout our jumpstart experience because we don't want to be double picking and, you know, gaining uh, multiple of the cards that we already have uh, once we have four of them, right? For example, uh, so, you know, there are a ton of cards to farm. There are so many cards to get uh, within the jumpstart decks, as you can see. Uh, and that is why it is so notoriously hard to collect and complete the set. If we go into our MTGA assistant here, we can go into our collection and then we can scroll down here to um, jumpstart. Where are you? Dun, 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 dun. Here, 44.92% only. And you can see all of my other sets, you know, like 90 plus on everything that's ever come out. And then we have jumpstart, 45%. Uh, so there are a lot of cards to get uh, within the jumpstart uh, thing. And you can pay gold or gems and uh, personally, I farm my gold. However, if you were farming your gold, this is a great place to spend it. However, I am in a goal to hit 1 million gold. Um, so we're not spending any gold. I'll spend my gems. I know, that's so cringe, right? Tree-hugging goblins plus one. I'm going to take tree-hugging. I like that. I already have uh, all of the goblin cards unlocked. So, And uh, check the lands too. You can get special lands uh, within some of the decks, which is really cool. I think it the lands come within the Planeswalker builds, but I could be uh, wrong on this. So let's do Tree Hugging Enchanted, I guess, maybe? I don't know. And you always get to pick two different uh, boosters. The game slams them together uh, to make a deck for you, which is really cool. On one hand, on the other hand, <laughs> these decks are dog shit. <laughs> They're so bad. <laughs> I don't like them. Uh... You know, we'll do our best, and I'm sure, you know, you guys will have that opinion as well as you progress through the Jumpstart event. And, uh, yeah, let's get after it. We need two wins to get some more rares, uh, of course, and I think we can do it. We have no one drop, so let's grab this. We're green, too, here. Um, so this could be a potential mirror match. Excited about that. No, this is Gruul. Uh, one damage uh, to itself. What the heck happened? When it enters the battlefield, do one damage to target creature and one damage to you. Big whoops. This should be an easy win. Uh, make sure to RTFC, right? Read the fucking cards. Um, you know, if you watch my channel, you realize that this is one of my uh, hardest lessons learned. <laughs> I misplay all day, but it's okay, right? That's how we learn. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. So we probably want this so we can drop this on four. It needs to be white. And it's untapped, and we're going to get hit for two damage here, but that's fine. We have Faded Feathers, gain that life back, shut down one of their better uh, attackers. Oof, okay. So, whenever this, uh, sorry, when it taps itself, it would be cool if it was an auto-tap, like um, the Brazen Outlaw. 
to make the treasure. And then they could have still attacked. Uh, whenever you draw a card, it gets plus two, plus two until the end of turn. That's pretty cool because we just picked up the Land and War Visionary, which is a draw effect. Three, seven with Vigilance. Um, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two. And it has First Strike and Lifelink. If there's another aura attached to it, which we have in the uh, Indomitable Will here. Wolf, gain control, add two mana. By golly, getting hit for five here. Okay, only three. And they tap to make another token. They should keep it as a defender and tap it on our turn. I don't think that's sorcery speed. So we get the draw organically. You know, that's actually fairly cool. Um, they do have the token to block, which is a bummer, but, you know, whatever. Let's just do our thing. Vigilance and Trample until end of turn. I really like that. And it deals damage equal to its power to a creature you don't control. We'll hit that Dragon's Guard, or... Uh, sorry, that's not a Dragon's Guard. And then that Trample helps us quite a bit here. Derwin Elite, right? That's all right. We get six uh, damage uh, through with the one block is five uh, via the Trample, which is nice. And we've got two creatures. They're down to one, four cards in hand. And uh, I think we're, we're quite nice here. It would be cool to have more Trample. But we shall survive. They need removal. They need creatures. And the deck seems to be performing better than I remember any of the other Jumpstart decks performing. I'm going to be honest. I remember these decks being absolutely brutal. Wow. How do you not? How do you not? I mean, we don't have a ton of creatures left uh, for ourselves, but that's okay. We could have kept the Visionary uh, to defend as well. Played the land first. My bad, right? A little misplay. It's fine. And uh, let's look through our deck here. What are our Keeters that we're dealing with? Oh, we've got the Spirit Dancer. Okay, okay. So that's nice. I already have four copies of this as well. Um... A lot of the uh, jump start for me is the commons and uncommons. Um, you know, if you are playing some of the uh, historic meta decks using your wild cards, you'll collect the important ones just through this. Uh... Oh, that is a thing. Eight mana, target creature gets plus five, plus five, and trample. Goodness gracious. That is a card. It's more like the limited uh, feel, right? It's... Uh, you know, it takes you out of that standard super deck grind. And um, it's like a limited deck that you don't have to make. Uh, which isn't that bad, right? This is instant speed for draw. Uh, we get a draw through the stage here by playing the creature, which is great. And, you know, that's going to push up the oak. And we really just want that trample back in the wheelhouse. They should double block the sage. Right? Uh, they don't, though, because that's a draw engine, and you don't really want to allow that to stay in play. They could have blocked the 4-3 and a 1-1 to kill our draw engine. I think that would have been a beneficial play. Okay, they get the removal there. That's nice. The Trusty Retriever. Um, well, it's not bad. Enters the battlefield, draw a card, plus we draw off the Sage, which is just, like, so much value. Right, that is pretty crazy. Let's lock down this Invoker. I think that's our best play here. Um, and then just double attack, keep the Llanowar back. And we potentially have our urge to play. They do double blocks. So we'll skip it. Any target? No! So let's take a draw. And then we don't lose our visionary. Another sage. Good game. 
Uh, I think we wrapped this one up quite nicely. Another devil, that's okay. And, uh, yeah. So, if you could play games at that, uh, ferocity, I don't even know the right word, um, you do alright. So, we get a rare, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, if you could just farm rare wild cards to this, it's great. Um, and of course, you know, those rares are the ones you don't have in your collection because, uh, of the way the reward system works, I believe. I'm about 95% sure on that. The normal game works that way. I'm pretty sure the jumpstart does as well. Like, if we had a reward that we already had four of kind, it would give us something else, right? And then, of course, if we did have four, we'd get gems anyways. Land looks good. No turn one. Well, we do have a turn one. No turn two. Okay. So, planes. This dude. I don't even... What is that? Anointed Chorister? Maybe. Right? You know me. Have crushing canopy. Looks like uh, they are playing tree huggers as well. I want to save that trample until like you know it's really worth it. We have lifelink, so we can attack, gain one life. Uh oh, that is our heater. That's a good card, man. No attacks. It gets plus two, plus two for each aura attached to it. And we actually don't have any auras in hand, but a deck filled with them uh, will lead us to glory soon. Don't you dare. Oh, they've got removal. You dirty dog. Okay, okay. Yeah, we need just to find the land, so let's take the life gain. Still no land. Ouch. Ouch. Up to 23 here. We want to get that oak token in play. Both of these oaks uh, would be ideal. I'm worried they have more removal. Um, they're not really presenting any threat to us. Like, you know, these are just defenders, so we're fine. Zombies you control get fat. 1 3 with reach, no attacks. We might get uh, steamrolled here, right? Zombie nation in the house. Okay, okay, okay. Let's get rid of the reach, keep the lifelink. Not feeling good about it, right? We bricked hard. We brick elect like no other. Piling on, which is great. No blocks. We're down to 20. There it is. Alleluia. We could snag that. It's got flying. I don't even know if we really need to. Let's get the fatty in play. This cannot attack or block, uh, so I'm going to take the life gain here, right? If we trade with the feeder, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Down to 19. 
Oh! That is insult to injury. Oh my gosh. Let's lock that down. Should we race? I mean, that hits for four. That's pretty good, right? Oh! I caramba, baby! Okay, okay. So that was good, right? We'll give him that. We can't defend against this in any way, shape, or form. Let's see what we top deck before we scoop. Ouch. Okay. Okay. Towering Titan. That is a cool card to have picked up. I mean, we could chump block it. Right, we get the token here. Kill the zombie, just get it out of play. And then because we have vigilance, we can still strike in. We're blocking the 9 9 with the 1 1. Holding on for one more turn. Cool, cool, cool. Oh my gosh. Wow. Now that's a good draw, mate. So they can just give everybody trample, right? And then our block's not as good. Oh, we Let's see what we draw. Even if we get a good draw, I think we're done, so... Right? Luckily, they don't have enough... Oh, they do! Through the battlement. And it's a land! Good game. Good, good game. We bricked off the start, so that was kind of hard. And, uh, you know, that crushing canopy crushed my hopes and dreams. So let's try a third, right? And some of these matches go on for a while, and they're hard to win. Uh, and that's my first experience with Jumpstart. It was like, oh my gosh, why do these decks suck so much? But, uh, hey, maybe I'm just picking the wrong combinations, right? We've got the lands. You know, I think that's all we really need to look for. We have some creature base, um, some auras. Let's do the best. Oh my gosh. Nice. That is so freaking good. Who does that? It's easy for other people to win matches, apparently. <laughs> Should we just scoop right now? Should we just freaking bail? Green spells can't be countered, whatever. I and mean, they can pay six. To make everything buffed up. Well, it could still defend, and I hate that. Let's still lock it down, and then we can maybe bounce that to our hand later if we need. So we're just sitting stale. Just laying on the heat. Good for them. Hopefully there's no removal on their behalf. And we can get this Spirit Dancer dancing. Take it, baby! Meow. <laughs> that fourth land would be cool. It would be cool, bros. I mean, they probably have something, but we should still try. 
We'll give this match one more turn. I don't think this is going to work out. And it does become a time investment, right? There's no rank involved. It is just your time. And I th I'm pretty sure this is game. If we grab our fourth land, we can continue. If not, it's a definite scoop. Down to 18. All right. Let's shut down the flyer. Draw a card, which is good for us. Gain four life, also good for us. No attacks. All creatures, no auras for the Spirit Dancer, so we're not able to really defend against the Onslaught, but they have no trouble pulling creatures. Oh my gosh. I wish, bruh. So we can block one of the 1-1s. One Still taking, what is that, 4 damage. Just playing the creature. Right, so we can get another blocker there. Could have played the Retriever instead, but the 4-4 four, four with Reach I really like. Um, you know, we'll play that Retriever next turn while this comes in tapped. So we can bring that back to our hand, which is really nice. Each Elf. 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 Not Elf. Elf. Human. Oh my gosh. And that's at 6 mana, which they have. So we really need to frig up that Shepherd. Oh, they can just tap it to create tokens. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah, we're still not going to let it through. It's got to die at some point. They do get that Death Touch Elf back, which is great. We want to just recast that on it next turn. No attacks. This Warden of the Woods is really good as far as draw engine goes. But, I mean, you know, 5-5 five, five is uh, something else. Let's put it on the Spirit Dancer. See what we get. Mm, it doesn't really help us at all. I was hoping to get uh, something else we could cast. No attacks. The Death Touch is annoying. And everybody becoming a 5 5 is also super annoying. They have all elves. We could kill one of them. We would lose one creature. Our sage would go. Okay, the flyer's annoying. So they're not 
casting uh, the five fives. Let's take the draw. Now we have Vigilance, but uh, the Death Touch is still super annoying. The first strike uh, will protect us from the Death Struck. The Death Struck! So that might actually save us in retrospect. Five. Yeah, we'd get it. They couldn't kill us here. So they just chump block it. Now if we could grab Trample... That would be cool. That life gives us a lot of wiggle room, right? And the first strike, lifelink, makes it hard for them to attack through. Did we get it? They don't get anything good. Golden. And we just need to keep playing blockers. Like this knight needs to get played. Or we play the retriever and we shut down the flyer. Either way, we're going to gain 8 life uh, from it, and, you know, they basically have to do it, because we're going to continue to gain 8 life each turn. Potentially twice a turn, so it's uh, it's awkward. They should just, uh, well, they can't even attack with the flyer, right? Because we have reach through the sage. I think we might get this. I think we've got this, you guys. That is lucky. I almost scooped when I seen that turn 1 mythic, right? The shepherd is just like, oh my god, this is the luck we have. <laughs> Lanor Visionary gets a draw. That's good. So let's grab something. Um, I mean, this is cheaper, but we could cast both of them. Let's take out the Death Touch. We get the draw. We gain four life. We attack for eight. Should we attack with the Vigilance now that the Death Touch is gone? Probably. We'll keep this one back because I don't want to lose it. I don't think they're dealing seven damage though. Right? Four, five, six. I mean, they could. I just doubt it. Spirit Dancer leading us to victory. Mmm. Yeah, this is good. So we're thinning out their creatures turn by turn. Our life is right where it needs to be. Uh-oh. Game just got serious again. <laughs> there goes our, uh, our home run hitter. Nice. You gotta love a match that's got a little back and forth to it, though, right? Get that Sage in play. It's really nice for the draws, and we can double draw. Here, is this a white source? Yeah. So we get a double draw, and then triple draw through the uh, Corister. Ooh, that's nice as well. Kind of replenishing our hand, and this is enough to help us win the game as well, in my opinion. Vigilance can all go in at this point. Uh, if they trade with the 2-2, that's fine, because then the Shepherd becomes less effective. I have no idea how we came full circle to win this match. Incredible. Blessed be thy jump start season. We need lots of these good wins. There's so many times uh, that it just did not work out for me last year. And it got actually to the point where I would uh, I would concede really early and I'd just take my packs instead of trying to get the single card rewards as well. Um, but so far so good. Maybe I just need to make content instead of trying to farm on my own. They do have uh, the two cards in hand, which is good. 
They don't want to lose the shepherd, but without any other creatures to, you know, benefit from that ability, I think we're good. Blessed be thy draw. We got really lucky. We got so lucky, in my opinion. Feels bad for our opponent, right? Um, you know, how do you lose that match? Jumpstart's hard. You had a mythic that's just, like, so good. But, I mean, you know, luckily enough for them, they did get that mythic in their jumpstart options to collect. So that's a win for them, right? Let's not focus on negatives here. It's not what I'm about. Only good things. Oh, that's a creature. A 5-5 five, five with Trample. We got Sacrifice. Let's get rid of the Defender, I guess. Alright. So many things we can do here. Let's take our draw, first and foremost. That double draw pushes up our Sage. And now we can kill this thing. Which is really nice. Easy. And why not? Just make the token instead of hitting harder with the thing. Take the draw, right? Just keep the pressure up for next turn. And we're all in. Shepard can trade with the 1-1, but I doubt it, right? It's going to want to block um, that 4-6 instead, or the 4-5, potentially, or they just take it all. Oh my gosh. And they top deck to land. Oh my god, that feels so bad. Woo! Watch them stack their creature for a draw. They get a field wipe, right? Shadow's Verdict. Actually, that would not even work. Let's sacrifice our token. And we'll just class it up here. We could do a bunch of other stuff, of course, but why Why waste anyone's time? Let's get after it. Let's claim those jumpstart rewards, right? That's what it's all about. Give me this second reward. Woo! Oh, that hurts. All that effort just for 40 gems. No! <laughs> so you'll get gems when you have four copies of the card that it gave you, right? Um, and this goes to confirm that it's not giving you cards that you don't own four of, because I know for a fact, as we looked at our collection, I don't own all four copies of all of the Mythic cards within Jumpstart, right? This is really easy for us to see. 12 out of 26 wild cards, of, those are my Mythic collections within Jumpstart. So what are the odds? What are the frigging odds that we pull a mythic card that we already have four of when we only have 12. That must have been a deck that I wanted to make and it needed four of those mythics and we went in on it. Man, that hurts. It could have been another mythic. I mean, 40 gems is cool, great, but gosh, why doesn't it have, you know, that thing where it gives us something that we don't have if we have the four of the other? Whatever. Arena, Wizards, Jumpstart 3.0. I know you guys are going to fix these little, uh, little, I don't even know what you could call them, imperfections perhaps, uh, that make the play experience less than enjoyable. Not less than enjoyable, but less enjoyable. It is still a great time. Don't get me wrong. I had a ton of fun. And that was the Tree Hugging Enchanted. Um, you know, looking at our deck, there's not much to it. It was pretty simple really just relying on a ton of value. Like, there was so much draw in this deck. We had a little bit of trample as well. And then, um, you know, all of those auras, which actually kind of helped us, like the faded feathers, uh, you know, stopping our opponent from attacking was a huge benefit to the deck. So I enjoyed it. Thank you all for your time and attention. Get into that jumpstart. Start building up that historic collection. If that's the kind of player you are, you're not really a free-to-play individual anymore, and you're looking to take that next step Historic is bang, and rotation is right around the corner, so a big majority of your current card collection gets shifted into the Historic pool, which is cool. So it's a good time in a few months, September, right? We've got four, three and a half months away uh, for that. But, um, you know, it's something that we can keep in the back of our minds, right? We do have a few months 
So let's take advantage of it if we're all caught up on our current uh, drafts and things like this, right? So thank you all for your time and attention. Make sure to check out the link tree for all of the goodies, the contests, the giveaways, the community. Uh, I want Spotify playlists and stuff in there. So there's a lot of cool stuff. You can support the channel through the affiliates, even through my Patreon, uh, all of the above. Have a magical day. I appreciate each and every one of you. Take care, and we'll see you soon in the next.